Well, Sri Lanka's leader has insisted that he is ready to investigate allegations of war crimes here and human rights abuses, declaring we have nothing to hide. It's a free country. Before hurrying away from the Commonwealth summit in Sri Lanka, David Cameron threatened to push for an international inquiry into the claims if President Rajapaska's government does not hold its own credible, independent investigation by March. Our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Miller managed to put a few questions to the president at his press conference earlier today. The Prime Minister, who promised to shine a spotlight, had his moment in the limelight the morning after his frosty one-to-one -one with President Mahinda Rajapaksha. David Cameron kicked the hornet's nest, demanding his host launch a credible, transparent and independent investigation into war crimes allegations. Let me be very clear, if that investigation is not completed by March, then I will use our position on the UN Human Rights Council to work with the UN Human Rights Commissioner and call for a full, credible and independent international inquiry. This ultimatum is now in line with that of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Both of them have visited the former conflict zone in the north of this island. Yesterday, the Prime Minister was mobbed by ethnic Tamils whose rights have been trampled since government forces vanquished Tamil separatists four years ago. Mr Cameron said the voice of the Tamil people needs to be listened to. In Colombo today, Commonwealth presidents and prime ministers held a retreat in a posh hotel. This summit has been a disaster. Nearly half the leaders who were to have come didn't show up. The host of the next heads of government meeting has pulled out in disgust over this one being hosted here. So when the president held a news conference, everyone knew what was coming. But the killer question was asked first not by a foreign reporter, but by a Sri Lankan journalist. Today, British Prime Minister David Cameron said, if, you, if the Sri Lankan government fails to co complete the in investigations into war crimes or alleged war crimes within, uh, by March next year, he will push for an international war crime inquiry. That is, that is his view. We are a democratic country. Yeah. A democratic, I mean, we are all equal. Yeah. And they can say what they, they, what they want. People who are in glass houses must not uh, throw stones. He looked annoyed. I would like to ask you whether you will indeed uh, launch an investigation into war crimes, alleged war crimes in this country, as requested today by the British Prime Minister and also by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. And if so, how far up the chain of command Will that investigation go? Uh, we have appointed a committee uh, in Parliament to look into some matters. And uh, we have appointed a commission for disappearance uh, and uh, missing persons commission. They have already started the uh, investigation. So we have done the, what we can. His answer lasted for nine minutes. He talked of how he'd ended a long and bloody war. Is it a crime? To save their lives? Every day for the last 20, 30 years, people were dying, youth were dying. So we have stopped it. He said if there are allegations, they would be investigated. Does anyone have a question that's not specifically on Sri Lanka or human rights? <laughs> but the questions kept on coming, and by the end, the Sri Lankan president was looking pretty cross. Well, the president has now just left the room, but what was extraordinary about this news conference that not a single question was asked about anything on the official Commonwealth agenda. Everything was addressed to Mahinda Rajapaksha about war crimes, and human rights. Britain stuck its neck out here, but this is not the British Empire anymore. And for the former colonial master to hand down ultimatums to the Sri Lankan leader does not go down well. The focus on the persistent allegations has cast a long, dark shadow over Sri Lanka's moment in the sun.